Hi, welcome to Youth Sunday School. I'm starting to think I should get some kind of cool backdrop so you guys don't have to look in my bedroom every week. Also, last week, I realized that I kind of made a mistake in that we only told the first part of the story of Joseph and then I talked about how it was okay to be different. So it kind of sounded like I was saying, be proud, be different, because then your siblings will sell you into slavery. That's not exactly the message I wanted to convey, so we're, go we're going to continue the story of Joseph for as many weeks as it takes us. I think it's probably going to be in like four or five parts because the story spans a lot of chapters in Genesis. Today we're going to look at Genesis chapter 39, the first part of Joseph's story in Egypt. When Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, Potiphar, Pharaoh's chief officer, the commander of the royal guard, and an Egyptian, purchased him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man and served in his Egyptian master's household. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he did successful. Potiphar thought highly of Joseph, and Joseph became his assistant. He appointed Joseph head of his household and put everything he had under Joseph's supervision. From the time he appointed Joseph head of his household and everything he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household because of Joseph. The Lord blessed everything he had, both in the household and in the field. So he handed over everything he had to Joseph and didn't pay attention to anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Some time later, his master's wife became attracted to Joseph and said, sleep with me. He refused and said to his master's wife, with me here, my master doesn't pay attention to anything in his household. He's put everything he has under my supervision. No one is greater than I am in this household and he hasn't denied me anything except you since you are his wife. How could I do this terrible thing and sin against God? Every single day, she tried to convince him, but he wouldn't agree to sleep with her, or even to be with her. One day, when Joseph arrived at the house to do his work, none of the household's men were there. She grabbed his garment, saying, Lie down with me. But he left his garment in her hands and ran outside. When she realized that he had left his garment in her hands and ran outside, she summoned the men of her house and said to them, Look! My husband brought us a Hebrew to ridicule us. He came to me to lie down with me, but I screamed. When he heard me raise my voice and scream, he left his garment with me and ran outside. She kept his garment with her until Joseph's master came home and she told him the same thing. The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us to ridicule me came to me, but when I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment with me and ran outside. When Joseph's master heard the thing that his wife told him, this is what your servant did to me. He was incensed. Joseph's master took him and threw him in jail, the place where the king's prisoners were held. While he was in jail, the Lord was with Joseph and remained loyal to him. He caused the jail's commander to think highly of Joseph. The jail's commander put all of the prisoners in the jail under Joseph's supervision, and he was the one who determined everything that happened there. The jail's commander paid no attention to anything under Joseph's supervision because the Lord was with him and made everything he did successful. <sighs> that was dramatic. Like watching a soap opera. Wild. So before we get to the main point of this story, which is kind of serious and important today, we're going to go over a few fun facts first. First fun fact. Potiphar was an officer of Pharaoh, um, chief officer, if he's called in the scripture. And in Hebrew, he's literally called Captain of the Slaughterers. So he was either the Captain Executioner or the Captain Butcher. Um, but the text just kind of describes him as Captain of the Guard and generalizes it because we don't know whether he was Captain Executioner or Captain Butcher. Fun fact too! Joseph's good looks are described in Hebrew exactly the same way as his mother Rachel's good looks are described earlier in Genesis. Aw, he takes after his mom! Cat. Fun fact three. It's constantly mentioned that God is present with Joseph. This is a fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham about God being with his future descendants. Enough said. So, the main point of 
this lesson in this story today, I think one, consent is important. And we see in this story how important it is and the consequences of what happens when there isn't consent. Things get confused and muddled and people end up in trouble. So make sure if there is somebody you're interested in that they agree to everything romantic and physical that you want to do with them. It's vital. And the other lesson here is that this story details an abuse of power on the part of Potiphar's wife. She, she and Potiphar, essentially, they own Joseph. He's their slave. They have power over him. And so the fact that she is trying to get Joseph to do something inappropriate with her that he knows is inappropriate and makes him uncomfortable puts him in a really difficult position because she is in charge of him. And it's not okay to abuse power like that. And she ends up abusing her power over him to such an extent that when she realizes she's not going to get what she wants from him, she has him thrown in jail and sent away. And it's just, it's terrible is what it is. And so this kind of thing unfortunately happens even in society today a lot. A lot of people in positions of power abuse people who they have power over, trying to get them to do things they're uncomfortable with. And a lot of people feel helpless because someone in power over them is trying to make them do things, and because that person is in power over them, they feel like they have to do it. But that is not the case. That's inappropriate. And so the main lesson that I want to share with you all today is, I think it's very serious and important. If there is a person in power in your life or who has authority in your life over you, like a teacher or a coach or an older family member or anyone really who has, you know, more power than you do or they're in charge of you and they make you uncomfortable by trying to do or say things to you that are inappropriate. First of all, that's not okay. Secondly, it's not your fault that this is happening. That is entirely on them. And three, you need to talk to a trusted adult about it because abuses of power are never okay and consent is important. And consent is not possible when there are power dynamics at play. If, if somebody has a person in authority above them or who has power over them, they can't consent. Consent is not possible when that happens. So when we look at this story about Potiphar's wife and Joseph, we learn that, first of all, that's, that's a relationship in which consent is not possible because one person has so much power over the other person that it's not fair to begin with. They're not on even ground to begin with. And nothing romantic can happen there, only abuse. So remember that. If someone who is in charge of you makes you uncomfortable or tries to get you to do something inappropriate with them that you know is inappropriate or that makes you uncomfortable, it's not your fault. It's not okay that they're doing that. And you, you've got to tell a trusted adult what's going on. Seriousness aside, next week we're going to continue with the story of Joseph, and it's not, not going to be as uh, sad. Maybe I'll get a cool backdrop by then, and it, it's not going to get as serious as today was. I just really wanted you all to know that because I value you all, and I want you to live safe, healthy lives and not be bothered by bad people who are sometimes put in positions of power. Make sure you check into the virtual youth loft this week. We got Bible study on Tuesday night, youth group on Wednesday night. Of all of those youth groups, probably the most fun. So if you're gonna pick one, pick that one. It's Wednesday at seven. And I love you all. Be good, be kind for no reason. Keep loving people and keep being you because you're awesome. Bye.